Centuries ago, the Malian emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great western ocean to discover new lands. They succeeded in ways no one could imagine. Now, 3,000 years later, their descendants have made a home for themselves on a new planet, and the calls of adventure and discovery are stronger than ever. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the High and Old Blade Keeper. DJ Knight as Akemba, the Musalian Bio-Priest. Michael Sinclair II as Eli, the Misagai Lightbringer. Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Monsagene Bio-Priest. Abria Iyengar as Koza, the Hyenol Fixer, and Ahenio Vargas as the Storyteller, as they explore new planets, make new friends, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to The Motherlands. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Got that unmute just in time. Welcome. Hello. Uh, I'm very happy that you're all here. My name is Eugenio. I will be your storyteller this evening, and this is Into the Motherlands, episode three. Uh, welcome back. So happy to have you all with us to continue on this second season of our journey. Uh, we have lots to, I know we, we're starting a little late, and I have lots to talk about uh, here at the top after our uh, sponsor shout outs, but the most important thing that we do to start with is introduce everybody on this screen, all these gorgeous faces. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a d6 and go at random today because I'm tired of going in order. Chaos rules! Wow, it's gonna be a session tonight, y'all. Uh, so who's gonna introduce themselves first? That would be Michael. Hey, Michael, how you doing this week? <laughs> <laughs> That's my luck. All right, cool. Hey, what's up? Huh? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, you know, passed my physics exam from the last exam that I had. That's 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 wonderful. Doing awesome. Uh, so yeah, I play Eli, the uh, Misajai um, Lightbringer. Uh, their pronouns are they, them. My pronouns are he, him. So yeah. I love it. Oh, thank you. I missed that this week. I apologize. <laughs> I'm Eugenio, your storyteller, and I use he, him pronouns. Uh, all right, who's up next? Oh, I'm so glad I didn't roll the same number. One, two, three, four. It's DJ. Oh. Oh, it's my bad. It's me. Hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> the dice are mean today. That, so like, I know. I I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I re-muted because I was like, I'm not going to be the dude. I'm to so sorry. Between. And it was like, oh, guess what? DJ. So I was like, oh. So I had to JK. fix it. But uh, I'm DJ. DJ and I playing a Kimba in remember how to say words uh he is a musalian bio priest his pronouns are he him as are mine you guys are awesome thanks for showing up for season two. Ah, oh, yeah all that all right who's next to introduce today oh that rolled under my keyboard it's tanya hello everyone i'm tanya uh oh god i play invicta i had to think about it for a hot second i know the, the high and old blade keeper and both invicta's pronouns and mine are she her all right. Next up is um, Christina. My name is Christina Ariel, and I play Admiral Intense Stare at Ohania. Mm, intense Stare, right back, my love. 919. <laughs> and she is a Monsagani bio priest and is having some work exploring who exactly she is. So that's fun. That's right. I guess I don't have to roll a die for this last one. Uh, Abria, hi. <laughs> I want you to roll the die anyway. You want me to roll it? Okay. Yeah, just see. Oh my god, it's Abria. Oh my gosh, look at it. <laughs> so perfect. I can't. Fudging rolls on tape. You got caught in 4K. <laughs> well, with that yeah. or, you know, all six sides of the dice, said Abria. <laughs> perfect dice. Hi, I'm Abria Iyengar, and I'm playing Koza, uh, your high and old fixer. Yeah. yeah that's all. All right, that's the crew for tonight. What a what a thrilling and exciting way to do that. We won't be doing that again. Uh, <laughs> but it was awesome right. though. Like I suggest doing it again, just for principles sake. I mean, yep. I had fun. And when do I get to roll physical dice? Because exactly. I got to show y'all my rolls all the time. And we'll all know that I'll go first every time. That's just how- God, I hope rolls. so. I really hope so. And this is my pledge that I will not fudge these rolls to make that happen. So, <laughs> so if it happens, it's just because this die really likes you, Michael. All that's, right, let me do let work. me do our shout outs. <laughs> We got stuff to do. All right. Uh, this is how much fun we have, y'all. Thank you for joining us for it. Uh, all right. We got some thank yous to say. First off, Dahar Dice. 
Diehard Dice, thank you so much uh, for creating the Musalian Skies Dice Set, uh, which if you haven't gotten your hands on, you can get at dieharddice.com. Uh, but that is not the only awesome thing they have. They have all kinds of awesome stuff. So you should peruse their entire site. And then once you've laden your cart with beautiful dice, uh, you should use the code IKEMBA, I-K-E-M-B-A for 10% off your entire order. Uh, you can use that code throughout the month of May. Uh, so use it to its fullest. Uh, we'll have a new code for you in June, but you know, don't delay. Use this one. Uh, so thank and you. Interject to Dice. really quickly. I just want to say that that is, that is a fantastic code. I am personally uh, honored <laughs> that that is the code, and I feel like all of you should use that code absolutely right now. Like, don't even question it. It's a fantastic choice. The Campbell's a great dude, as far as I can tell. Just saying. I mean, abs I don't Fantastic disagree with choice. a single Y'all word are of awesome. that. I'm saying, yeah. like, come on, look at look me yeah. in the eye, and then click That's that buy button. Even. Use that account. <laughs> code. You're welcome in advance. Thanks to whoever did it. I appreciate you. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us for season two. I'm gonna shout out. I love it. I love it. So do that. See, you make DJ so happy. All right. Thank you, uh, thank you number two, Blue Microphones. We want to thank them very, very much uh, for providing us with some really awesome equipment to make sure that we sound good for you all. You should go to bluemic.com. Check out everything they've got, uh, whether you need a USB mic, XLR mic, anything else. I've been very happy with their products for years and, uh, you know, Oh, and I hit them sometimes. Go do the thing. Uh, of course, we cannot go any further without thanking the folks over at Cortex by Fandom. Uh, Into the Motherlands is primed by Cortex, uh, and we have had a great time showing the system off to you all. You should definitely follow Fandom's Twitter, uh, follow Fandom's tabletop division on Twitter at, at Fandom Tabletop because they are all the time putting out information uh, about all kinds of settings and games that you can play with Cortex Prime, including Tales of Zadia, the official Dragon Prince RPG, if you're familiar with that property from Netflix, uh, and the upcoming Legends of Grayskull, Masters of the Universe RPG. So all kinds of cool stuff going on uh, with uh, Fandom Tabletop. Check them out. We will also be giving away yet another Cortex, uh, hand, Cortex Prime handbook code this week. That will be uh, for one lucky winner. We'll get a digital version of the Cortex. Oh, wait, where's mine? I'll show it to you. Uh, we'll get a digital version of this, the Cortex Prime Handbook, which is so pretty, uh, so that you can create all the games that you would like to uh, on your own. So keep an eye on the chat. Mods will tell you how to enter. You do have to be present at the end of the stream when we pick the winner uh, so that we can get information from you to get you your code. If you're not here, we will have to pick another winner. So stick around. Uh, and finally, we want to thank Twitch this evening. I just dropped a die. We want to thank Twitch this evening. Into the Motherlands premieres exclusively here on Twitch, and we're so happy that they are continuing to support our show uh, for a second season. Thank you very much to Twitch, uh, and we're happy that y'all are here. Now that's normally where we get into the recap, but we have a couple of other announcements for you all this week uh, that I'm gonna do here at the top and we'll do again at the end. Uh, the first one is this Friday, so in two days at 3 p.m. Eastern, sorry, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. GMT, uh, Abria and Tanya and I are all going to be on Gen Con TV having a little chat about Into the Motherlands. So uh, yeah, hang out with us. Uh, we're going to just chat about the show and the game and the development and everything else we've got going on with it. That's at, th again, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, 11 GMT at twitch.tv slash Gen Con TV. And one of the things that we are going to be talking about in that interview is the Kickstarter. That's right. We have talked about it. We've plugged it. We've teased it. And we're finally going to do it. Uh, Into the Motherlands setting book Kickstarter goes live in nine days, May 14th, Friday, May 14th. We will be live on Kickstarter for you all to get your hands on Into the Motherlands. I'm so very excited. We do not have a pre-launch link to share with you all yet, but please make sure that if you are not already, follow Into the Motherlands on Twitter. It's Motherlands RPG. Uh, follow us on Twitter, because as soon as we have that pre-launch link, we are going to tweet that out, and we need you all to click notify me when this goes live. The more of those we get, the better chance we have of being very, very visible on the Kickstarter front page, and that makes all the difference in the world. So if you're not already, follow us on Twitter, and as soon as we have that pre-launch link, we'll tweet it out, and uh, looking forward to having you all sign up to get news. Remember, uh, clicking on that link and signing up does not <laughs> require you to uh, fund the Kickstarter, to participate in the Kickstarter. It just lets us know that we have interest and that helps us get the word out. So keep an eye out for that. But we are so excited to get this Kickstarter launched. Uh, we've gotten some art for it. We've got the layout ready for the page. And oh, y'all, I'm so excited for you to see it. I really, really am. Really, really am. Okay. I think now with those extra two 
uh, announcements. I think that's our our pre-show chatter. Uh, so time for a recap. <laughs> I mean, I'm pointing, pointing at poor Michael to do it. I see you, Christina. I, didn't I mean, I could do it. I don't mind. Oh, you know? oh I mean, wait, who are you trying to point at? Because the stats from last week. Like, let's <laughs> let's just let everybody that's know. True. I like wait, Christina. Who are you pointing at? Who are you pointing at? I got one job, so <laughs> that's not <laughs> true. One you know. job. <laughs> All right, so we can do this. Um, so we go to Natural Cove Research Station. This is April. Yeah, that was the last time. Yep. Okay. Um, and then, so when uh they told us about the crash site, they said that uh it's it happened in a usual vacation spot. Um, and anyone that we bump into on our way over to the crash site is probably uh, some sort of tourist. Um, they've cordoned off the area. They, they kind of gave us some info about the wildlife, wildlife, oh my gosh, the wildlife that is um, around there. And it hasn't really disturbed wildlife too much. Um, so that was, we were kind of happy about that. Um, the area that they had cordoned off, they had like a, a special kind of like dome that allowed it to kind of be concealed in a way um and so we could we entered the dome and um we were trying to figure out how to access it uh we had a little bit of trouble with that um another important thing uh before this all happened some people imbibed on some uh some homemade um uh you know uh imbibements uh so <laughs> including potables yes including Eli who <laughs> has never drank before so that's <laughs> something of note um and so uh they weren't very useful later on when I was coming to searching and, and um, finding things that are going on uh what else do we got here the ship that we were investigating didn't look like it was supposed to hold any life forms because it was a little bit too small um so then at some point Kosa end up cracking open the ship uh, using their equip using her equipment and then we also had um i'm just gonna say admiral's you know uh silo 909 so i don't take any shades we can we can wrap this up <laughs> so uh, uh, uh she went in there she went and investigated the panel um and uh, got caught up in some wires uh needed uh, additional help from invicta invicta went inside to also help and figure out what was going on in the inside of that pod and i think that's where we left off yes it is it's so regardless of how like detailed or laid out the the recap is i always have you all do it because i don't know if i've ever mentioned this but i have you all do it because you always remember two three reasons one you always remember something i forget uh, and that's always a delight. And two, it tells me what you all latched on to, which means that helps me figure out what's important for this session. The most so when you see me... Oh, oh sorry. Please. The most important detail for the whole because <laughs> I'm sure it's a very important for everyone. Silo oh, no. 919 cried in 4K. So that's also something. <laughs> that... The shade. Yes. I said there wasn't going to be shade, but then Eclipse you passed lied. by and then shade yeah. happened. So I'm sorry. <laughs> it just happens Hello. sometimes. I am an shape. android and I forget nothing. Ooh. All right. Uh, yeah, that that was it. That's I don't know what else to say. That was the uh, that was the recap. That's what happened last week. Uh, Invicta, I'm pointing like you all can see what I'm seeing, but Invicta and Silent 919 are inside this strange conveyance. Uh, something inside was flashing and seems to have been counting down to zero, as you said, and it has reached zero. Now, we love a bit of action at the top, so let's move to rolls, because we got to get some rolls done for you all to find out what happens now that this thing has gotten to zero. Here we go, through the wormhole. Oh, thank God. Hi, um, I'm laughing because uh, I was really hoping that we were gonna go to the wormhole when I did this and we sort of mostly did. Um, all right, the first thing that I need to happen is, let's see, who's the first tester? Sila919, you are the first person uh, to do this. And this is going to be a contest, not a regular test. The ship that you are in is trying to get you to do something and 
you can decide whether or not you want to uh, resist and participate in this contest or not. But what the ship is trying to do now that the thing has reached zero, there are all of these uh, cables and sort of what look like um, almost like brackets that would like hold things in place on the ship that have sort of activated and have begun moving out and they are reaching and grabbing for you Sila, as if to try to pull you actually as you look more closely to pull you into one of those alcoves that look like it had something in it that maybe left the ship at some point uh it is trying to pull you into one of those Sila. So I'm going to roll this up first because the ship is initiating the contra the contest in sort of a strange way. And then you can decide if you want to resist or not. Um, but I'm going to be rolling this up. And I did this ahead of time so that I would know what dice to use and not have to take forever to figure it out. 1d12. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Oh, I know what that means. Uh, and then Sila has a d8 of corrupted stress, which is going to help me out. All right, let's see this roll. Holy bananas. I have concerns. I rolled a 12 on my d12 and an eight on a d8. Uh, I did roll a hitch, uh, which is, which is, uh, or an opportunity, uh, which <laughs> I guess is good news. Uh, Sila919, would you like to spend a plot point to buy my hitch and step down your corrupted stress? <laughs> No. Okay. All right. So uh, currently it is a 20 to beat. Would you like to resist what the ship is trying to do to you? Yes. Okay. Let's get it on. Here we go. Uh, so you're going to put together whatever pool you think makes sense uh, as this ship tries to grab you from right. the inside. So we are going to go weaponized braids in the form of a wire cutter and <laughs> a wire cutter and a little like like razor like a straight razor yeah yeah oh yeah okay so one of these days we're gonna codify that hair but not till we're done <laughs> listen if my hair is not multi-purpose what's its purpose oh no it'll have all kinds of purposes i just i'm gonna ask you to like tell me a bunch of them and we'll make it so <laughs> Whatever your mind can imagine, your hair. Yes. Can. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with fight. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't think that's one that uh, Silent 919 has used before. That's exciting. And I am going to use Bio Priest because I'm praying this works. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> What a great reason to use BioPreeze. Amazing. On board. All right, 20 is the number to beat. Remember, ties go to me, uh, so. <laughs> Close my eyes and roll. Everybody freeze until it comes up. Okay. Oh, damn. Your that dice worked really so hard. Good. That was really oh. good. Um. Fails, but it was really good. Hurtful, wow. hurtful. Hurt. Wow. Wow. Um, salt, you're pouring salt. <laughs> For the podcast oh. friends at home, she rolled max on both of her D8s. Yes, she it did. It was still and four off. <laughs> and then she <laughs> and then she rolled a three on her D6, so she can't even spend a plot point to add the D6 to the total and win. Oh, it's about to get worse. All right. So well, but you better not pull my hair. I'm not pulling your hair. I promise that that was last season. This season we gotta we gotta do other things. Um, no. So uh, Invicta, you watch uh, as as Sila gets sort of uh, these these wires and brackets like whip out uh, and sort of wrap around her and just pull her into this alcove on the inside of the ship. It she is not the correct shape for this alcove, or I should say the alcove is not the correct shape for her because uh, ain't nothing wrong with Sila nine one nine shape. Uh, so it sort of slams in and you can see that it like, it is trying to mash her in there. It's not gonna like break off bits of her to get her to do it, but it looks uncomfortable. Uh, and after a few seconds, you see uh, Sila is like folded up and in that alcove and a sort of uh, uh, metal, I don't wanna say door, but essentially like a cover slams down 
uh, in front of the alcove, sealing off Silent 919 from the rest of the interior of the ship. Invicta, you're next for the rolls. I have real dice this week. Yeah, next. you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> all right, so Invicta, it very quickly becomes very clear what this countdown is, not because of what in uh, what ha just happened to Silent 919, uh, but because you can feel, it's not a very big pod and you know that the engine is on the bottom. You can feel that engine core getting very, very hot. Oh, it's about to take off with us or explode. Uh, for what it's worth, if it helps Invicta to figure out which of those two is about to happen, the hatch has definitely not closed. Okay. Um, well, shit. Is, and the thing is still counting or it stopped? It has stopped at what, none of the symbols made any sense to you until it stopped at what is, seems to be pretty obviously a big old zero. Okay. Can, are there panels I can try to use or anything to at least get Sila out? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, there are definitely interfaces in there. They're all a little, I mean, they're all very sort of, <laughs> sort of silly to say in a sci-fi setting, but you'll know what I mean. They're very alien looking, like you don't recognize anything, but there are controls in there that you can try and manipulate if you want, yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything right around where she's been sealed into this place she clearly is not meant to be squished into? Um, you could maybe try, uh, it depends on how much time you want to spend. You could maybe try to get into the the um, sort of the inside, like the wiring of the ship to do something close to where she is. But otherwise the only interface sort of seems to be like at the front, whatever, sort of the cockpit area. Although none of those words make any sense because clearly this ship was automated in some way, but. All right, then I'm just going to start ripping wires out. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes you are. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna call this a test uh, okay. because the ship is not actively trying to stop you, though it doesn't love what's happening. Uh, so, uh, so I'll roll first to set a difficulty for this and you're just going in and ripping stuff. And your goal is specifically to free Sila. Free Sila and get out of there. Okay, um, while I put together this dice pool, those of you, uh, let's actually move to Kosa next, and then I'm gonna head to Eli and Akemba. We're just sort of going from the interior further and further out. So I believe Kosa is still on top of the yeah. machine, yeah? Uh, you also have a little bit of a view of this. Yeah, so you talk while I put this pool together. What, like, I, as I see, like, I have completely lost visual on Sila, but I yep. kind of am seeing uh, Invicta, like, pulling wires, like, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? Don't pull them out. I'm trying to get Sila out. Help me or be quiet. Okay, I'll help. Uh, is there any way I can help from up here? I just want to assist with her yeah. dice pool. Of yeah, that's great. So why don't, okay, so you can do two things. Uh, you can take, uh, you can create an asset with your, how many plot points do you have before I talk for days? Just one. It doesn't matter. Just the one. Okay. So uh, since you don't have enough points to create a brand new asset and also share it with Invicta, we'll have you roll a, a sort of help test. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to do sort of a, uh, sorry, Tanya, we'll get to yours in a minute, but this may help you out. So I'm just going to do sort of a base, like, are you able to help out here? That's an a what does it say on that screen? That's a 14. Uh, so go ahead and toss, you toss together a dice. I was on 2d8 too. Y'all, these dice are out to get me. Um, hurtful. And by me, I mean you. Uh, so yeah, put you together a help pool. Uh, and if you're able to do it, depending on your effect die, uh, you will give an asset to Invicta to help her pool out. Okay, um, definitely going with fix and fixer like, she needs help with the machine. This is literally what I'm built for. Uh, and yeah, I'll throw knowledge in there too. So there just go. a power, a pile yeah. of nonsense and I rolled high enough. Oh my God. Yeah, you did. Oh. Yeah, you did. My okay. One. And your effect die is a D8. So Invicta, uh, you can add a D8 to your pool in addition to okay. all your other stuff if you would like as Koza. Koza, what are you doing to help Invicta? Um, I think Koza is now reaching into the wires from where she's cut in and trying to find ones that look like they might connect to any like automated. I'd like to just be able to mm -hmm. yell a color for her to like aim for the teal ones. <laughs> like 
I love that. I love that. Okay. Yeah. Just yelling out instructions. Definitely not stressful at all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not, not cyan teal. It's different. Please. I love it. Um, all right. So Invicta, I am rolling up your, oh, <laughs> I'm rolling up your difficulty and your difficulty is only an eight. Okay. Um, because I was building my pool, I am going to roll real dice because these dice are okay. out to get us. <laughs> okay. I'm convinced. Uh, I'm going to use Heinel because I am smart as Heinel and bump it up to 10. And um, <laughs> no for a D another D10, so two D10s. Yep. And then um, knowledge, so three D10s and um, knowledge. Yep. causes eight. I just want to be eight. extra. Hey, yeah, look. I'm, I'm with you. All right, so you're gonna roll all of them. You're gonna add two of them together and you're gonna let me know if you get any ones. Oh my God, if I don't beat an eight with these, I'm gonna yell. I... You stay there. Yeah, <laughs> you on 10, stay there. No, like one of them hit the table. I'm like, stay there, right there. Oh, so <laughs> I think it's very safe to say I've beaten an eight. I'm Good. taking my D10 that rolled an eight and my D8 from Kosa that rolled seven for okay. 15. Yes, okay. And that leaves us with two other D10s, neither of which are came up one, right? No, they actually okay. both came up sixes. Okay, uh, so actually uh, that leaves a D10 effect die. So uh, yeah, I think you are able to, uh, you, you, know, you tear out whatever security protocols are there keeping Sila in there and the grate or whatever it is, uh, the, the metal shield sort of rises back up. Now Sila is still in there, uh, but you now have access to her again. Let me real quick hop out to Eli and Akemba and see just sort of how you all are reacting. That that klaxon, that alarm was going off. And when the you all couldn't see the zero, but when it got to zero, it sort of held its tone and then cut off. This was mere seconds ago. Um, so last episode, uh, I didn't ha hit this up in the recap, but I was setting up some sort of, um, yes. like belay system or some sort of, um, system, uh, to get someone up just in case that need to happen. Um, so what I want to do now, because it seems like, uh, silent 919 is able to kind of get able to get out of there some, uh, in a method. So we're, I'm going to see if any of the, outside of this craft has any pad eyes, like any place that has like a metal loop or something. Um, oh, yeah, it is, um, no. <laughs> it's, no, it's you, like smooth. You do a quick ring, it is perfectly smooth. Even sure. finding the hatch was rough for Koza. And we're on like beach uh, sand, right? Mm-hmm. Beach, uh, I mean, for what it's worth, there's a thin layer of glass underneath the ship, but it's mostly That's not very out. helpful. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get, uh, a large stake uh, out of the equipment that I have uh, and like, drive it into the ground. Um, okay. And I still have Akimba back on uh, one part of the belay system. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to get on top of the ship and uh, start to uh, lower some rope down uh, to get people out of the, uh, the ship oh, if they Ian. want to. Got it. Yes. Yeah. All right. In Akimba, uh, that's what I lies up to pretty quickly there. What are you up to? And I figure I was on the other side of the belay. Yeah. All right. So, so helping just help tie it yeah. off. And the, and the reason I have another stake like into the ground is just another backup system. Like mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. a Kimba who's going to help out mostly. And then just in case something weird happens, not everything com is completely ruined. Yeah, hopefully absolutely. is the key because dice don't yeah, like oh well. people today. Uh, I don't want to take that <laughs> They chance. definitely don't like me. So. <laughs> I would rather they not like you than they they, they dislike me. Fair, right? fair, like fair, that's fair. nothing fair. against you. Because when they dislike like, you, it's I'm used it's to it. Much. This is a it's this is a dollar. lifestyle. Like I'm good. Like <laughs> yeah, right. Good. You've settled in. Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah. So uh, in a few moments, uh, Invicta and Sila and Koza, there'll be a, a rope for you all. But I want to check in because this is all happening very quickly. So uh, Invicta, now that you've got Sila, uh, con visual contact with Sila, what's next? Uh, I am trying to pull her out of this thing. Yeah, uh, I think that's gonna be. Uh, I think that's gonna be another pool. Uh, you immediately notice that Sila, and I should tell you this, uh, Sila, you are there and you are aware, but you have been when that shield closed down in front of you. You felt yourself uh, get plugged in to this ship in a way that you had not before. 
uh, in a way that it would not let you before. But once that shield went down, you were plugged into it. So you are aware of uh, what's going on around you. Your, your senses are active. But at the moment, uh, the ship has sort of, um, it's not that it has control. It just has sort of shut down uh, anything outside of like basic cognition functions. Oh, can I see where the ship is kind of plugged into Silo? Uh, it's at several points, but you could go for them. Yeah, for sure. Oh boy. Um, before I start just grabbing at things, um, Sila, can you hear me? Recalculating. I hope that's a yes. <laughs> Yeah, there is so much data, Sila919, that is just running. <laughs> it's a silly thing to say for, for a month again, I guess, but like in one ear and out the other. Uh, it's just running straight through your processor. Most of it is gobbledygook. Uh, but you, I'm going to save that. Uh, that sounds like gobbledygook. Wobbledy, 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 wobbledy. Drop it like it's hot, hot, hot. Stop, stop. Stop. Oh, wiggle with it. Oh, songs. Please tell me names of songs from the pop, pop, pop lock and drop it. Hmm. I, any chance I get to have Christina play malfunctioning Sila is a good opportunity. Invicta, what you doing? You going into, oh, you're going in to help her out. Uh, let's get I another. I was, but the sudden malfunction is like. Oh, oh. Uh, oh, mm -mm. so, so question. Yeah. Well, in character, is it is it feasible I could reach in and reach around Sila and just pull her toward me? Uh, yeah, there are a few of those. Uh, the wires shouldn't be a problem in that case because they're mostly attached to her sides and back. Uh, but the brackets are what's sort of holding her torso in. Oh. So that's what you'll have to overcome to get her free. But that said, there is, because of the weird way that she's stuffed in there, there's room for you to reach around and, and get a, a good like bear hug on her if you want to try that. Yeah, but I can't get the, I got to get these brackets open I think first. probably so. And, and uh, you know, you're a smart high and all that, that engine core is not going to last much longer. Yeah. Um, if I bring my acid into play to cut those. Oh. It, remember, it's legally distinct vibranium. It can't that's break. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it won't break. That's for sure. Uh yeah, give it a go. I like that. Why not? All right. Um, this is definitely an intense, and I'm going to bump it to 10. Um, fight, because I have to fight these things. Um, I'm going to say duty for this one, because I have a duty to my teammate and my say dagger. Duty. <laughs> this is life okay. and death. I love it. Before you roll that, I'm going to set the difficulty. I am adding your injured stress, because I feel like this is a physical test, and that applies. Uh, yes. doesn't matter. Didn't roll great on it. Uh, Ooh, it's an eight and that's two hitches, Invicta. Ooh. If you would like to spend some plot points to, to decrease your stress, you may. Uh, you don't have uh, to, because uh, it looks like you got a couple of D6s of stress right now. Yes. Um, I'll hold on to that unless I have okay. to use it right now. Nope. Um, so that is one, two, so it's two D10s a d6 and an eight for my dagger. So another four dice. Okay, right. great. I'm using the dagger. Yes, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, add two and let me know about ones. I just made it, I got nine. Oh, any ones? Uh, yes. Okay, and uh, what is the remaining die that's not included? A two. Uh, sorry, what size die, not what number, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, it was a, both of my d10s got a five and a four. Okay, great. All right, so I am going to buy that hitch. So take another plot point, and I'm uh, gonna step up your injured stress to a D8. Okay. Uh, Cause great. this is successful, but painful. Um, oh you you sort of, you're able to score the brackets with your Aventera, right? Yep. Yep, Aventera uh, uh, blade. Uh, but it just won't cut through. There's a core to them uh, inside the, the softer metal that's holding tight. So you're able to score it and you just have to rip. And it sort of, you know, tears up your, your hands and your claws a little, but you are successful. You do manage to free Sila 919 when I say you have 
seconds. Um, and there's a rope is... now. Okay, so there's a rope. I just pull her out and I start climbing. Okay. Uh, so goodness, so many things I want to do. All right. So Invicta. Well, I is... wanted to do this, and I don't know if I can lift Invicta. I actually want to throw her toward the hatch. Lift Sila. Oh. <laughs> If I, 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 I want that so very much, uh, but I don't think the craft is big enough. I think it's such a small cramped inside. You could make, you know what you could do? You could give her a little booty up and, and do that. But I, I don't think yeeting her is quite going to do it. <laughs> I don't even know if I can lift her since she's a cyborg. Because remember, she oh. carried Invicta before. Um, I have to apologize. I will be right back. You two can uh, figure out how you're going to how you're gonna handle that. I, I have a family thing to run and do really quick. I'll be back and I'll tell you all about it. Yes. Um, so, si is Sila, are you still malfunctioning? Yes. Uh, I'm just gonna fireman carry and go for the rope then. I don't know if we need to wait for Eugenio to, to roll the dice. We just say we did it. Sila's <laughs> gonna be bent over forward over your shoulder. Uh -huh. Bent over, she's just going bent over to the front, touch your toes. Bounce that thing up and down, 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 down. What down. is the Admiral saying? The ship attacked her. Use your spider thingies. Grab her so I can climb up. Um, uh, and I like plunge one in and I'm like, I don't think I, people can fit through the little hole I cut. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, Good luck. I'm gonna say to wow. Akimba, um, Akimba, start, start running fast uh because you're handing the rope down to somebody right uh invicta you're you're like you're tying someone up or you're using the rope in some um sort of i person. i've got i've got sila over one shoulder and i'm gonna try to climb up okay uh because i have it hooked up in the sense that it comes like the the belay but like in real life if the belay person starts running away from something it can hoist you up really quickly so uh, i was gonna try and do that or have folks do that if they want to. I mean, I can wrap it around my my arm and and hope for the best. Yeah. Is the Kimba within my line of sight? Have you? Have you? I I don't think so. You're still inside the craft, right? Yeah, unless anyone I is really trying to pull us up. Oh, that okay. So let's start there. Sorry, y'all. I uh I I am waiting for some some happy family news. Uh, and thought that that was it, and it turns out it was a political campaign. So you were robbed. Wait. Dang. Uh, I, I feel a little bad. That person on the other end of that call got a piece of my mind for calling. I don't feel times. bad. I mean, sometimes you got to roast them a little bit. Like, they, they call get what they get. at the inopportune times, and it's like, bro, you just take me off a lesson. You wouldn't they have are problem. just doing their job. That is well, that's the, that's the thing. It was just that it was list. multiple calls, right? That's why I was like, oh, maybe this is the hospital. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, I lie and Akemba, you two are out there with the belay system, and do I hear that we are activating that? I think, yeah, I'm having Akemba, because Akemba's yes. the main belayer. Uh, mm -hmm. I just, like, kind of set the system up, so I yeah, was yeah. going to have Akemba, just in real life, like if you're mountain climbing, if the person on the belay walks away or runs away from the point that they're supposed to be, uh, it, it, like, helps hoist people faster, so I was going to uh, kind of cute. I'd cute Akimba to kind of start running or jogging uh, the opposite way of where the ship is. And he Got has it. trucked up the deuces and is on the move. All right. Um, here's what, how we're going to resolve this. Akimba. I'm so, sorry, my dude. I'm going to need you to roll. <laughs> Yay. Do it. I was hoping that maybe I could just I'm run. I'm so sorry, my dude. And be fine. I can run and be good. And we don't have to worry about any dice. We're good. Uh nope. definitely nope. Yeah, obviously not. Uh the dice were not in my favor. Uh I'm just gonna say life is logical. So he's definitely rolling there. Uh, sure. Survive because survival. Um <laughs> then also knowledge. He was already told, bro, run. He knows. This is a life and death situation, and he should probably chuck deuces. Deuces. All right. Yes, I love that all. Uh, and hey, my rolled a 12 and you rolled a 13. We did there it. There it is. Yeah, you did. All right. So uh, who's first on the rope, Sila or Invicta? I'm holding her, so I'm on the rope. Got it. Okay. So... <laughs> 
it can but uh, asal j and yaktur are both out you know a ways away but watching you all curiously so they heard the alarm uh but they can't see anything they're not really privy to any of these conversations and they <laughs> they just see kemba start hauling ass uh with this rope and and out pop uh invicta and silent 919 koza what are you doing uh just perched on the top watching and then i look over and see like it can't move why are you running <laughs> oh. okay uh as as invicta and sila uh crest out of the hatch uh the three of you see and hear this tearing ripping sound and this wave of heat as the energy core of this mysterious craft uh, explodes. And the three of you are not inside the craft, which is such good news, uh, but you are still very close to it and are sent flying. Yeah, thanks for that warning, y'all. No one mentioned to Koza that there was a timer <laughs> and that it ran out. <laughs> Look, I was trying to just get Sila out and I could leave her. You could mention that it was a time lock thing. She says that she just blasts off like Team Rocket. <laughs> uh, you got those spider legs. You'll be fine. Blasting off at the speed of light. <laughs> speed of light. <laughs> oh my goodness. Lay it um, down now. Let's <laughs> die. <laughs> that's right. All right. That's quite good. Uh, okay. Thank you. So the blast happens. Eli and Akemba, uh, you two are far enough away from the ship at this point. Uh, Cause Eli, where were you? I was, I was on top at with the, the rope, but like I, as he was running, I'd, I'd be going with him. With right, him Cause right. like, I'm just, we are, I know what the flow of movement is happening is away from the ship. <laughs> Great. Okay. That's what I thought, but I wanted to be sure. So the two of you are far enough out that you, you know, you get shoved by the by the shockwave and and blasted by the heat but you two are are far enough out that you're okay uh when you you know are able to sort of when you two are able to sort of get your wits about you your ears are ringing uh you turn back and uh you see your three companions uh in sort of scattered across the beach uh you take you take a moment and you recognize uh, that both Koza and Invicta are breathing, uh, and that Sila <laughs> is not breathing, but is functioning, but all three uh, are currently unconscious on the sand. All right. Alive is a good way to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, Ikemba goes running. Yeah. Like, immediately. Like, they're out. He doesn't appreciate it, and he is about getting them up so he immediately like are Absolutely. they close to each other um i no not i mean they're probably like i don't know 15 20 yards from each other like they went flying okay this was this was no no small detonation akimba went running up to whoever was the closest um yeah that was definitely oh look there's that die again that was definitely koza all right he is kneeling at koza. i mean michael Oh, okay, he's kneeling at Isla. Thank you. No, 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 no. I'm fine though, right? I, I know. I was just saying because I rolled the die and it's supposed to always pick you. It was a bad That's joke. I'm so I, sorry. I got the Kemba. joke and I oh, this yeah. is a serious I, I, moment. I'm so sorry. I took it serious like, because care. this happens all I'm the time. Here the people who need the help. So like, let's get <laughs> sorry. It. This is a serious moment. This is my fault. I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, Koza is close. Is closest to you. Uh, he has kneeled mm -hmm. and is attempting to wake her up so that she is no longer unconscious. So he wants to find out what is the problem yeah. and do everything in his power to fix it immediately. Okay, okay. Uh, now you are a bio priest. Uh, mm -hmm. So you you have a facility with this. Uh, let's put together a dice roll. And then if there are also, I can't remember which, uh, which talent special effect you took. So if that applies, we can deal with that too. But let's start Great. with the dice pool. These are some no, uh, Koza was, okay. Uh, I got to roll to set your difficulty. You have no stress, do you? Not that I'm aware I mean, of. I imagine that this is a stressful situation, but you have no mechanical stress. Well, yeah, but <laughs> not that I'm aware of. I don't remember any specific stresses. He's cheesed up, ready to go. Hey. Cool. Uh, I mean, sometimes what a shame you, you don't have any stress. Oh, you gotta I eat that cheese. cheese. You know I rolled a five. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's cheesy. It ain't easy being this cheesy, and he's right now. You know, roll it real quick, like so. He is uh, in the midst of prepping the life is logical because yes, 
he saw his friends awake then he saw them not awake and he don't appreciate that uh survive uh actually no fix because he needs to fix whatever it is the problem and he needs to figure it out he's got a knowledge of fixing humans and non-humans alike because he has been at this for a reasonable amount of time he knows how to fix things that are broken so he is going at it in the hopes of fixing some things it's never easy is it no but uh sorry you did have yes oh it's a binary universe as one of his talents that's the one you are using treat to heal the damage sentient and fail the test and roll one or more hitches Uh you spend a plot point for each hitch you rolled to add a d6 for each plot point you spend to your total hitches used this way cannot be activated by the gm so that that's just like all a thing i have to do so i just roll a d6 uh, yeah, you roll a d- spend that plot point, roll a d6, and we'll add it to we'll add it to your number. You succeeded, but more to the point, it keeps me from buying that hitch. And, and that's what I'm. Um, that's really all I'm gunning for, right? Like, I, I don't know. need any of the sh- the DM shenanigans to affect my ability to do the things. So uh, if I can actually get it to click for me, that'd be great. <laughs> Never. It doesn't want to do it. It's just like, no, nah, I don't appreciate anything you're doing right now. Just refresh the page, see what happens. Maybe the internet dislikes me briefly. It's a day for that, right? So, <laughs> or you could, do you have a D6 by you? could just roll. You know, I mean, because ultimately the number doesn't. In front of me, I'm just trying yeah. to, like, you know, live by the system. I got you. I got you. Also, ultimately, because you already succeeded, the number on the die doesn't so much matter. It's, it's about me thing. not it's getting the hitch, stressed. though. Like, I don't Well, and I want to know how well you succeed. Do you know what I mean? Hitches ain't shit. Um, and but they ain't saying nothing. Hey. And it's a three on that. I cannot. A three. So that makes it a 17. So you very succeeded. Uh, So so you are able to uh, revive Koza. So Koza, you at the moment uh, are going to... I am lost in the sauce right now. I am lost in this page. Here we go. Um, So (laughs) you have... Uh, you had quite a bit of injured stress from that explosion, Koza. Uh, Ikemba is going to be able to come on over to you, and uh, with that heroic success, because it was more than five higher than mine, uh, inv- uh, sorry, uh, Ikemba is going to be able to treat your most immediate uh, wounds, and I'm going to ask Ikemba to tell us what it looks like when he's treating in just a second, but ultimately that's going to step your injured stress all the way down to a D10. Uh, sorry, to a D8, a D8, Koza. Thank you. I was about you. to say a D10. If it was downed all the way down yeah. to a D10, that yeah, was sorry. I think all I was, that was a problem. <laughs> cool. 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 Uh, so Kemba, uh, real quick, tell us what it looks like when you fix Koza. So Ikemba in slow-mo, much like uh watch, he just like is just like on the move on the beach. And then out in the distance, all you hear is someone here in the dark. Man. And he just runs <laughs> My up. God, I cannot. <laughs> And he just puts both hands on just like her torso, like one on her Uh shoulder, one on her Uh hip, and just Uh focuses and just like Mm -hmm. raises them ever so slightly just to get enough distance to where he can focus on what the problem is. And there just is this beautiful orange glow Mm -hmm. that comes from his hands and just lights her body and her wounds. And... It's like a warm, comforting aura just emits from his hands and just, we will not have this today. And he just does everything in his power to heal everything that he can see that is a problem from what she was minutes ago. And each wound just kind of like slowly closes in on itself. Mm -hmm. And just like, not even like, you would see this with stitches, but mm-hmm, everything mm-hmm. just closes and like you just see like smooth like spots where it just kind of like something, some invisible hand just like closes all of it and just like closes all those wounds. And he just, yeah. just there's a pulse as he just, as he just like steps off and just, Koza, are you all right? I, for the most part, yeah. So, Koza, real quick, before you reply, just know that Ikemba could see that there were two big problems. One was obviously uh, burns from the explosion, so singed fur, but also, you know, burn injuries. And then also just where you landed, uh, there was a head injury 
uh, from where you smacked the ground. Fortunately, it was sand. Uh, so, you know, once Akimba's done, you still have some, some singed fur. It's tender. Your head hurts, but you are conscious and ready. Uh, ow, ow, oh. And you see she kind of looks off and like her right glass, even though it's like shattered, the lens is shattered. You can see like a little reading as her like, her sort of like spinal implant is assessing like injuries and like tracking that they're being healed. And she just sort of looks at you with like super wide eyes and kind of watches the glow as it dissipates. And then she just reaches forward and gives you a big hug and doesn't say anything for once. And he reaches his arms around her and then just, hugs right back and just that's enough for me thank you you're very welcome and then he I looks lie. up because he oh, knows sorry. that another teammate is down and he's just like hoping to get to make moves because sure, sure. everything is not as it should be <laughs> correct i lie uh why when you see ikemba rush to koza what are you up to uh, so immediately, uh, I'm gonna get the hot knife out of my bag and I'm gonna cut the rope that Akimba's on because we don't want dangling ropes while things oh, are still dynamically happening and we uh -huh. don't want those. <laughs> Can you so imagine? I will hot cut the rope. I'll just bail on that. And then I'm gonna try and find the person, uh, who either looks like, uh, they're the most messed up or the most close to danger, uh, whichever one. I'm more concerned about who's most close to danger. Like if mm -hmm. someone's near, cause we're on the beach. So if, if like waves yeah, yeah. are like, it looks oh, like, you know, I understand. someone got sent to the ocean or they're near like the fire explosion that just happened. Like I want to drag someone away from that and then start helping them. I think they were all flung far enough away that the, the explosion site isn't a danger. Um, okay. I think, I think silent I'm, well, let's see. Okay, glad I did that. Uh, so Silent 919 was thrown towards the water. Uh, not mm. that she is, you know, right. Not that she can't handle water, but like if you're concerned about the tide coming in and taking her away, uh, that's where I would head. Invicta sort of flew inland. Uh, okay. So she's she's safely on the sand, nowhere near the, the water line. Uh, as I run over to uh, Silent 919, I'm gonna yell out to Akimba and Koza. Akimba, Koza, uh, get over to Invicta. I, 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 I don't see that. I don't see her right right now. And I'm gonna start running over to uh, Sila nine one nine to aid as a light bringer uh, to to get them back. Yes, I love that. Okay, uh, so same thing for you. We'll do a pool here, and I'm gonna do one first. What happened to Sila? Sila was in was coming out of the inside, and she okay. Uh, so that means that's gotta be this. She's face down in the sand. Let's She's face down in the stand. And what? Just leave it there for now. Oh. I'm just letting oh. them know my placement. Uh -huh. reason. I cannot wait. And I mean that genuinely. Uh, uh, okay, not too bad. So it's a 12 to beat. Okay. Uh, so the things I'm picking is Lightbringer because this is like my main thing that I do as a Lightbringer. Um, yeah. And then I'm doing balance, uh, or sorry, survive, because we're this is like a survival moment oh. for everybody. Um, and then I'm doing, uh, for values, I'm doing balance, uh, trying to bring Sila 919 back to homeostasis, whatever that looks like for okay. uh, uh, their kind. And so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, try and channel some of the, cause we're right now it's, it's, it's daytime, right? Still. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 So as a light bringer, I kind of get to choose like, Oh, do I want to channel like some of the light or channel some of the void in some certain scenarios? So I'm just trying to like channel the warmth of the sun and kind of like uh, use those energies to bring uh Sila 919 back. I love that. Can I ask you just because, and I want to ask just because of some of the, um, dice choices that you made is your goal uh, and either is fine but i'm just curious is your goal as a light bringer to uh stabilize sila or to revive sila do you do you get what i mean by the difference there? yeah 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 okay. uh i'm trying to that is a great question mm -hmm. i guess stab stabilization is probably most important to uh okay i lie right now because the other one might be a little bit lengthy and we don't know what's going on. So we want to like right. reassess as quick as we can. So I'm just trying to stabilize them. Perfect. Perfect. I love that. All right, roll it up. 12 to beat. Oh boy. Uh, come on. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man. Okay. Uh... <laughs> you. <laughs> Michael. Yep. <laughs> um, you can spend a plot point to add that third die, that two on the d10, to your total, which would be a success. I would do that. I, I, I would do that. I will do it. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> So how do I go about adding another additional dice here? So you can actually just, because what you'll be doing is you'll be including that D10 that rolled a two in your total. You literally can just click and drag it into the total box and it'll do the oh. math for you and it'll be cool for us. Yeah, there you go. So now, uh, because you manually did it uh, mm -hmm. and spent that plot point, uh, you you are able to succeed. You are able to stabilize uh, Sila 919 Sila, what is, oh, well, first, uh, I, I obviously what does that rolled, look like? I, I obviously rolled over Sila 919 to make sure <laughs> this all happened first. Because uh, if they were face down, you want to see, like, this person's okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it, I right do there. that first to make sure. My net. What? Hmm? My connectivity matrix is in my net. I mean, oh, I feel like that's a thing you would know. Okay, so I roll them over once to assess the damage on one side, which you usually do in real life, actually, and then roll yeah. them back over. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, channel the sun. So uh, what you're going to see, whoever's looking at it, it almost looks like, you know, when you light a fire really quickly, like it gets really dark all of a sudden before it gets like really bright. Um, that's what is going to happen. I'm going to look towards out to the sun, uh, hold my hand out towards it, and then you're going to see this flash of like darkness before the light. And I'm going to pour all that energy into uh, the neck uh, where the port is located to try and see if we can uh, stabilize Silo 919. Yeah, absolutely. And Silo, what does it look like when this, uh, when this happens and you are stabilized? Uh, Silo is still face down and you see one hand come up behind her neck. She grabs it. My neck. Are, are you my okay? Don't my you neck. do it. And my back. And at that moment, Sila's head completely turns around so that oh she's goodness. looking directly at Eli. <laughs> makes eye contact with him. Is, you know, every now and then people think they might like to hear something from us. Nice and easy. But we never ever do nothing nice and easy. We always do it nice and rough. <laughs> Head flips back, back into the dirt. Uh, I'm gonna start. Yeah. Doesn't know. I don't. I like doesn't know how to process any of that. They're <laughs> not. They're not computer. Uh, you know, savvy. I'm like myself. So I'm going to grab uh, uh, Sala nine one nine and start moving them away from the ocean area to like a more safe location. Got it. Okay, so as you are moving in there, about that same time is when Akemba has revived uh, Koza and Invicta, who is who is in a safe space. Actually, uh, what the other the other thing that uh, Eli probably didn't see, but Akemba would have, uh, was uh, some of the safety uh, officials that were that were guarding the bubble around the crew. Uh, some of them and Asalje have rushed over to Invicta uh, to see to her. So knowing that everyone survived, if not all in one piece, uh, this self-destruct detonation feels like a good place to go to our midway break, uh, take a bio, get some water, get some libations, do what you need to do, take care of yourselves. And we'll be back in five minutes uh, to find out what happens next. See you all shortly, y'all. Don't go anywhere.
Thank you for hanging out and not going anywhere. Hope you got your break in. Welcome back. All right, so as we left our uh, our adventures, uh, they had managed to get out of the exploding ship. Uh, they uh, took some damage, got, got a little hurt in Victa and Silent 919 and Koza, uh, but Ikemba helped out Koza. Ilai went over to Sila and Asalje and a few safety officials uh, headed over to Invicta. Everyone is stable. No one's in great shape, but everyone is stable. Um, and uh, Asalje uh, actually pipes up and suggests, uh, comes over to where the four of you are. Um, well, Sila, who is, who is malfunctioning and, and singing 2000s earth lyrics, uh, 21st century earth lyrics. Uh, is, uh, but Koza and Akemba and Ila, you are all there and and uh, conscious. And Asalje comes over and sort of looks uh, just all of their beautiful sort of aqua algae has just gone to this whitish, like very, very light seafoam green kind of color. They, uh, she, uh, she is pale uh, and she sort of is a little shaky and she says, uh, we can, um, there's a, um, there's a, there's a hospital uh, yes. in, in, Men, in Mandira. Get, you're fine, get yourself together. We need yeah. calm minds. Are you okay? Yes, yes, of course. Are you okay? Are you okay? We Got will, blown we'll... up, but he fixed it. Yeah. Yes, um, safety will uh, help us help us get if if you all think that's um a good next next step. Yeah, yes, I believe so. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll let um I'll let safety know, uh, and uh, and. Uh, so Asalje goes over and safety has has you know some some flatboards some they're not quite gurneys but they're you know neck support boards and such uh, and and you can see that they're uh, this is such a wild thing to point out but you know our devs do cool shit and I want to point it out the boards are made of this uh, this incredible sort of like uh, plant fiber that you've seen all over the place since you got to this beach sort of makes all kinds of stuff including some of the the buildings that you've seen look like they're made out of this stuff uh, but they pull out three boards because uh, they come over to you and sort of offer offer a, a you know a conveyance for you but you're also up and conscious and so it's up to you if you want to take them up on that um she kind of is fussing more with her like little spider legs that are like damaged and won't kind of go back into their configuration. So uh, I think she like snaps off most of them like at the base of her spine and puts those on it and says, okay, uh -huh. I'll follow. Um, Be careful. Safety, this safety official like doesn't bat an eye. Uh, it's a it's a Musalian uh, man and he does not bat an eye. When you put that on there, he just nods and walks off with the with the piece and, and everyone else begins to head toward toward uh, Mandira proper, the city proper and to the hospital there. Uh, just to check in on everyone. Yeah, Isla, you got some? Yeah, and because we don't know whoever checked on Invicta, uh, mm. I'm also going to check up on Invicta during the ride over or at some point, I'm going to try and find her and make sure that they are actually in fact okay. Yeah, uh, she, I mean, she seems sort of in a similar place to where you ended up with Sila. Um, the difference, of course, being that you were able to use your Lightbringer abilities to get mm -hmm. there and safety, uh, you know, used very mundane uh, first aid, but it got the job done. <laughs> uh, I lie, just, we are a community. They just want to make sure they have eyes on everyone. Absolutely. So. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and again, you know, not doing great, but stable. Akimba was yes. also on the way over there because he did look up and see where she was immediately mm -hmm. after waking up Kosa. So he was like, he's nearby, but doesn't want to I interrupt the professionals doing what they do because he can do some things. They, they're, they're just better what they do. Totally, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so all of you can can uh, ride together so that, you know, everyone is, is um, make sure that everyone else is okay. Um, and on the ride over, I think it's it's certainly safety. The safety officials in Asalje and Yaktur, who also come with you all, um, are are pretty quiet. Uh, a lot sort of just happened uh, to all of you, and and uh, and I think you know even uh, this seemed like such a safe thing to just check out 
this little wreck. This wasn't going to Hathoray's moon to fight squid creatures. This was just checking out a wreck. And so I think there is a moment uh, in this, you know, space ambulance uh, where you all just sort of reflect on, on <laughs> what's happening, uh, what has happened, why you're here, what you're doing here. And I would like to specifically zero in on uh, Koza's thoughts. So let's head over to another little screen so that Koza and I can have a convo, shall we? So Koza, you just got that living shit kicked out of you and you're okay, but it was, it was close. I mean, it was, you know, you were right there and that thing blew up. Um, what are you thinking about? What are you, I mean, I think most of our viewers sort of know where we're headed here. So what are you remembering? <laughs> <laughs> I think it starts with just a repetitive thought, which is strange for Kosa because she's used to, mm. she has ADHD. That's not very clear that her <laughs> thoughts are really scattered normally, but she's hyper fixated on the realization that she wasn't warned that the ship was going to blow up, that she was there helping and it just happened and no one said anything. Mm -hmm. And she's very focused on the phrase Yedwa, which like for Hyenol is like being a loner and mm. not like working for the collective. And she's trying to push down very strong, very negative feelings about Invicta and then kind of following those feelings back to the last time she was like with her people and she's remembering sort of the last the last couple of weeks when she was uh, like at, at uni before Torch came calling. Yeah, yeah, in fact, uh, in fact, I think, um, I think the, the, as you sort of wade through those memories and those thoughts and those feelings, uh, I think where we start is that you remember, in fact, that day that Torch came calling. For the rest of the crew, Chris, I, I don't know that, that Koza knows this, but for the rest of the crew, it was it was sudden and, and frankly kind of surprising when they were called on. They don't think it was for you, Koza. Um, and, and so we find you, Koza, uh, hanging out. You have recently, I think, finished uni. Does that feel good? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you're hanging out at home uh, and you're hanging out with, with a boo maybe. Uh, so you and this, you and this Hainal named, uh, named Natar, uh, sorry, Novatu uh, are, are hanging out enjoying post-graduation. Uh, Novatu has not yet graduated. Uh, I, think, I think he is working on a, a pilot's course uh, that is gonna take a little bit longer. Uh, but you have graduated and you two have spent a lot of time since graduation together and, and celebrating and you get, uh, you're with him and you get a notification, a, a message on your uh, comms tablet that sort of very unexpectedly comes through while you all are, I don't know, you tell me, what are you all doing when this um, call comes through? Yeah, I think she's just like mid, like finishing, making some very, like she's not a good cook. She doesn't pay attention to anything long enough for that, but she's worked very hard to not completely screw up like some very basic pasta. And as it like, uh, like as the notification goes, you're like, wait, can you just turn that off? It's really hard to not burn butter when the notification, just get it for me. Hold on, I can I do this. Uh, oh, that's on fire. I mean, I I got it. Oh, did you did you say it's on fire? No, I did not. It's fine. Okay. This is fine. I I'm gonna choose to not be concerned. Smart. I'm gonna mute the notification. Well, who's it from? Uh, hang on a sec. Oh. Oh. Shit. <gasps> Language. Uh, right. Sorry. Uh, feces. I guess that's better. What? Okay, now I I have concerns. Oh, sorry, sorry. I started reading it. Should I not have done that? Anyway, it's from Torch. Rude. What? Yes. Yes. See. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess we knew this was coming, but uh, well, I I should here here and and uh, 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 Navatu, who is this? Who is this? How tall is Koza? Because high and all are, are generally taller than Musalians, uh, yeah. but I'm curious about Koza in particular. Koza is short for a high and all, so she's probably like only like six feet tall. 
Okay. All right. And I I think I think Novatu is also uh on the shorter side. Um so uh so and also in many ways similar to you, uh just a little ball of energy in his own yeah. way. So he comes rushing in, uh Switch, clearly excited. And I'm sorry. <laughs> and and you sort of have to pull the comms tablet from him because he's very clearly reading this message. Let it, let it go. It's for me. <laughs> That's gonna be on fire. Okay. It, I uh, said that kind of not really. <laughs> oh, oh. See, this could be you, but you wanted to be a pilot or whatever. Exactly. I think I so actually win. So you read through, and it's none of it is a surprise. Uh, you have been called up as expected. You know, uh, recommendations. Torch has has sort of a pipeline through uh, the university in Hollins. Uh, so you know. It, it really sort of takes someone notably not good at what they studied uh, from this university to not get a call for Torch. So none of this is a surprise, but it's still exciting, I think, Jacosa. Um, the, the thing that might be a little surprising is that uh, you have been ordered to report to HQ uh, to get your assignment in just a few days, which is a little bit of a shorter timeline than I think most of the people that you know who've been called up had. Uh, yeah, so she's like reading and obviously skipping big important sections like <laughs> report date and she's like All right, okay I'm already calling your your dads and my parents and basically everyone else in our class and don't forget that means we have to uh, go on vacation before it all yeah. starts well well wait a minute though well when does it but like when does it start because I'm sure it's like in a month like when you're oh no um is it weird that it's in two days What? I don't, um, I Oh, don't. well, okay. I mean, that's, that's fine. But do you want to like work together on like how we're going to tell my dads and your fam that you're not taking it or? Uh, what do you, what do you well, mean not taking it? Well, in two days, I mean, we got this whole, we got this whole trip planned. No, no, I know. Um, but but this is what we've worked for our, our whole lives. This is what our families have. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, Koza, you, you've been so excited about this trip that we're gonna take. And I, I mean, I'm not gonna say I switched out of engineering and to piloting just to get the extra two years to put off my call, but like certainly was part of it. And you, you knew that and don't don't you want to go on the trip? Uh, of course I do. Um, yeah. But what I, I'm not going to say like no torch. I'm sorry. I have to go. This is everything we're. This is everything that we've worked for, so I have to go. Um. But, but is it? I I know I know we don't I. I I know we don't we don't have this conversation very often and it never gets very far and we do, but I mean, is that what you want, Koza? Because you know what it means. I mean, it means a lot of things. It means no trip for us. It means two years before I even have a chance of seeing you again. And 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 why? Because because I I don't know, because your parents told you to, because that's what your mom did, because that's I don't know, because my dads thought you were, <laughs> told me every other day how brilliant you were in class. Like what, uh, why I think do you Koza, want this so bad? Koza closes the space between them and she just kind of like puts her forehead on his chest and just covers his like muzzle with her hand. And it's just quiet for a really long time and is trying to hold back from like tearing up entirely, but just needs there for there to not be sound right now. Uh, and I think he knows that. I think, you know, you all, you two know each other pretty well. Uh, you've known each other since childhood and have, you, your relationship has gone, undergone many transformations over the years from, you know, childhood friends to sort of academic rivals uh, and then, and then to, to something much, much bigger, much, much more. So he knows, he knows what you need and he, he gives you that silence for, for a few moments. I don't, 
I don't want to go. Okay. So I know this is an oversimplification, <laughs> which none of our professors would appreciate. I won't tell. <laughs> Thanks. But if you, if you don't want to go, I, look, I, I get it. It's a big decision after everything we've done, after all the work we've done. But I, I think I, I think I need you to just give me a good reason. Because if you have one, Koza, you, you go. You go and you kick some rear end at Torch. But if you don't have one, Koza, well. Hi. Hi. Um, our whole, our whole lives have been for this. And you, you know, you know what they've always said, because we're gifted and yeah. we're responsible to use those gifts and our privilege Ugh. to make the world better, um, to do what we can, because we have to. It's not about what we want in this moment. It's about what's best for everyone. That's but with our whole, world is built on so if i don't do the thing i'm supposed to do who am i nikosa you brilliant and beautiful and caring and easily distracted and <laughs> not a very good cook uh, yeah but all of that doesn't change just because you go to torch Koza, you haven't made when was the last time you got to pick a course at uni? You never had to. When was the last time you got to you got to decide what you wanted to do outside of class and didn't have to study for an exam or finish a lab or Nobody, what do you want me to say? Do you I, want me I, to to say to tell them no? No, you got to switch. You got to decide to stop being an engineer because you wanted to be a pilot. And even if you said it's so we could, we don't know that we don't get to pick. We don't get to pick. We just do what we're supposed to. But we help the way we can. And you're saying things like, what are we going to run away? We yes. joked about it. No, we can't. let's do it. That's why I changed courses, Koza because it gave me two more years to plan our escape. Selfish. And I, I love you, I do. But I also, I love the thing that we represent, the thing that we could be. Um, um I'm sorry. I'm, I have to go. Wait, and Koza, don't. <sighs> please. Please. And she just picks up the tablet and kind of cradles it to her and slowly walks out of the room. And Nevachi doesn't chase after you. He doesn't call after you. You know each other too well for that. But what he does do that that I wish you could see was once your back is to him, he sheds a little tear, but he also smiles. And when he knows you're out of earshot, which is a while, because that high and all hearing, he whispers very, very softly to himself, I think you do have your reason. And I love you too. And I think that memory is where you, or that point in the memory is where you sort of snap back to the present moment, to the space ambulance and your companions. 
And I think she's cradling oh. her broken glasses the same way she was cradling the tablet then and just sort of staring out. Yeah, absolutely. And on that image. <laughs> All right. On that image, you are back, uh, back with your friends, back in the present. And it's quiet. And the, uh, the vehicle pulls to a stop uh, and without a word, the safety officials sort of uh, prepare and get Sila and Invicta and the spider legs uh, ready to, to exit the vehicle and head inside. And inside is this sort of incredible building um, you all could uh, you all could see if you if if any of you took any time to look out the the front uh, of the vehicle as you were as you were going you could see this this massive sort of downtown area with all of these buildings that unless you're very much mistaken are made from the same stuff as the as the support boards uh, but just sort of on a much larger scale it is this it is this obviously plant fiber that's everywhere but the hospital is different uh, the hospital is made out of this sort of almost marble looking uh, this marble looking stone the stone is white but there are these shocks of black all through it and occasionally sort of around the doors and around a couple of other features of the building you see those shocks sort of fade into this beautiful silver sort of veining in whatever this stone is. Um, but you're taken in and it is efficient. Uh, safety takes the uh, patients and immediately gets them set up uh, with, uh, with the professionals here. Um, and, and you all are reassured that, you know, very quickly, the rest of you are reassured very quickly that your friends are stable, they're gonna be okay. You'll be able to see them in just a little while. Um, but they, they need a little bit of time to, to fix them up make sure they're, you know, they're okay and, and get them back to consciousness in their own time. So, so in the meantime, uh, we will hop to Invicta and Sila very shortly. But before that, uh, Ailai and Akemba and Koza, um, you all are sort of left in this, in this waiting room. Uh, there's a, a salty breeze from the ocean blowing in every time the doors open. It's a beautiful day outside, but so much has happened. What are the three of you up to? Uh, Eli's going to speak up and say, um, I think if we know they're, they're going to be okay and, and need some time, um, we might want to go investigate what happened of the wreckage um, because we still don't know any specifics about it. What, what happened? Why did the ship explode? I actually have no idea I was outside of it. I believe I was there with you, but... Uh, do you, Kosa, do you have any idea of why the ship exploded? No, I wasn't... I wasn't able to... I couldn't interact with it. I didn't know it was going to explode. I'm sorry. Oh, why no. would you need to apologize? supposed to know those kinds of things. That's why I got brought. We all are supposed to know these sorts of things. Uh, it seems that not everyone knew things happened. These are the sorts of things that I imagine Torch knows happens on occasion, but that's why it still they, goes on to happen to us. Yeah, that's why they sent us. Um, we were able to get our friends out in time. If had it been somebody else, um, I'm sure this might have went differently. Valid point. Kosa, uh, how are you? I understand okay. that you feel like you needed to have known, and I understand that more than I can explain, but physically, how are you? Um, I can't, my glasses are broken, so I can't see the readout, Um, but my head hurts, and I think I have some burns, but I'm okay. Thank you for helping me. This is why we're a team. 
That's, there's no need to thank me. This is what I'm here for. Do you, you need um, any additional um, care? Or um, I know that sometimes when things get a little bit wild, um, going out and walking around, getting some fresh air and maybe sitting in the grass grounds me. Out of character, we're still in the ambulance, yeah? You're muted. You are muted, sir. I, yeah, I was hoping you could read my lips. Okay, just wanted to double check. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, you guys are, the, you all are in the hospital at this point. Okay, cool. So I didn't know if we were the ambulance or the hospital or not. And then, hospital, like, yeah. And Kemba just like leans up and is like, is there any water nearby, please? For all of us. Obviously, but definitely oh, drinking right. water. Yeah, I was like, "There's a whole ocean. I don't know what you want." Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, and there are. I mean, there, this, like I said, it is a f- efficient here. Uh, so there are uh, there are a couple of Musalians who uh, who are there, sort of in the waiting room, taking questions. You know, whatever, whatever, and they uh, they go and get you all, uh, get you all some water. I feel like they uh, obviously know who to give the water to first because we're standing here, but I, I think, think so. thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and they, they, they sort of, you know, once they've given you the water, is, uh, is there anything else uh, we can, we can do for you while you're waiting on your friends? Yes. Just, just looks to the two of you. <laughs> Here's our, um, our contact. Um, we might, um, just take a little walk for now um, and let us know if uh, the status of our friends change. Uh, yes, absolutely. As soon as they are uh, able to take visitors, we'll, uh, we'll let you know. Uh, and they, you know, transfer your comms data. And, uh, and they say, oh, um, please enjoy Mandira. I know this is a difficult time, but your friends will be all right. I appreciate the words of kindness, but I won't be able to enjoy much of here until my friends are all right. I'm, Understood. Excuse me. Can you tell us where our other friends are? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the Monsagene uh, distinction, Sila 919, uh, is in our uh, cybernetics uh, and Monsagene ward, uh, being cared for by some of the top uh, mechanics, engineers, and physicians uh, for Monsagene. And uh, your friend Invicta, uh, the Hyanol, is uh, being cared for as well uh, by some specialists who actually very fortunately just arrived the other day uh, and are able to to work on her. And I can't like Akimba kind of looks at Isla and just and then Koza and just I'm going to be all right soon enough to walk. In, in reference to Koza being able to, to Koza, oh yeah, around. Koza's okay. Her spider legs might take a while. Oh, and oh, the things he's like, like should, he, yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Steal her without like somebody saying like, no, you got to go be, be in your bed. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think I think actually when you uh, when you ask about Koza uh, and whether or not she's you know cleared, uh, the one of the uh, Musalians uh, thinks that you're talking about the spider legs and says, oh that that will take some time, I think just not getting what you're asking. Cause that was the patient that they saw wheeled in. So. And then he kind of looked at Koza and is, you still have your droid? Tiwi. Yeah. yeah, and she pulls like the rod form of Tiwi out. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you're all right. And if, if we know the Tiwi's all right, then we're in much better shape. And then he just kind of leans in and just, have you gotten the lay of the hospital yet? All of my stuff is offline. Hold on. Tui. <laughs> and she like tried to tap. So like, did he get exploded? What happened to my boy? No, I think if he if he was in <laughs> if he was in rod form uh, uh, and was on your person, I think he's okay. Cause I think he would have been protected from with it, the casing. Okay. And then you landed in the sand. So it's not like you were gonna, you know, shatter him if you landed on him or whatever. Okay, so as like the rod is sort of like devolving into Tiwi and like shaking himself out, she like goes on her tippy toes and like goes up to a vent in the corner and kind of pushes him in. But you have to send all the information to Kemba because I can't read it right now. I, I will just and point out. like tapping himself like, do I have a, a device on 
<laughs> do I need the software? What do I need? Uh, I will also point out that the two Musalian, like, uh, I don't, not nurses, but like carers or whatever here, watch you do this. Uh, they don't stop you, to be very clear. Uh, <laughs> they just sort of watch. And then once, and then once it kind of sees this and it's just yeah. like, Close. she does this all the time. No worries. Important uh, torch business. It's uh, all fine. We're fine here. Far be it from us to hamper our patients and their friends' comfort. And please do let us know if we can help in any other way. You are helping tremendously. Thank you for taking care of our friends. It is a pleasure. And you, you sort of, all of you, the three of you anyway, sort of hear this. I don't, there is a certain like service industry uh, cadence uh, that you've actually heard several of the people that you've heard talking here in Mandira. Uh, this is very obviously like a tourist town and there's a lot of like well-trained people. All right, so uh, the three of you, uh, is there anything else you wanna do in the hospital? Or are you gonna go out and explore Mandira and try and get some more info on the ship? Yeah, I'm just following the boys. Okay. Uh, I guess. I'll turn to Akimba. Well, um, while we're waiting, um, what do you think we should? Um, I mean, we're kind of just here. I would like to check on my friends, but I feel like that's being taken care of very shortly. And he kind of just like winks at Kosa. <laughs> very good. And just, uh, shall we have a, uh, a lay of the land? nearby outside of the building of course i i think i i would love that perfect Goza, would you like to go along i'd like to stay with you if i can as it should be let's go Thanks. and we just kind of like leave, like walk out of the building and just like yeah knowing that we're gonna find out what's going on because tiwi is a beast and we're just like, <laughs> that's true <laughs> We can get Absolutely. the heads up very soon on whether our <laughs> friends are good. And uh, Kim is so just confident completely. in that. Just like he's confident in his abilities because he's seen how she interacts with Tiwi. So he's like, no, 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 we're good. Let's mm. let's let's dip out real quick. Let's go have some lunch or something. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's check in on our two patients uh briefly. Um let's see. Uh Sila 919, uh, you are in the Manzagene ward uh, and they uh, they bring you back, they, they bring the rest of your sort of motor functions and controls online. Uh, so you are in full control of your uh, faculties, but but they they're whatever happened, whatever the ship uh, sent through you or into you or whatever that was is still there and so your corrupted stress which was already at a d8 uh, after that whole experience uh is actually up at a d10 now um fortunately though because uh because you were able to because invicta sort of had you you know in her arms when you all got yanked from the ship you managed to escape most of the worst of the of the blast physically. Uh, and so you only have a D6 of injured uh, stress from the explosion. Um, so that's not bad. So you're you're back online. Um, you are conscious, uh, but there is still that weird sort of malware corruption going on. Excuse me. Yes. Ah, you've returned to us. Do you and yours have time to talk about a great deal? Oh, um, we want to make sure that you are uh, properly healed first. Call me now for your free reading. Uh, reading of, reading of what? The reading of A Tale of Two Cities will commence at 4 p.m. South. The, the physician here finally realizes what is happening uh, and sort of, uh, oh, uh, looks like we may have our work cut out for us. Uh, and they, they sort of try and get back in with some more diagnostics. Um, it is truly one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, so as they, uh, they, they come over to you, Sila, and they say, um, now that we have you back, um, could you uh, 
Oh, uh, let's try motor tests. Cognition tests can wait. Could you raise your right arm? And yeah. then you think it all about, you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around and that's what it's all about. Amazing. Can I just verify whether that was in fact Sila's right or left arm? Right. Great, just making sure. Uh, Excellent. Also, Catchy, um, could you please nod your head? Excellent. Blinking and blinking and nod. Oh, excellent. Um, do we have your permission to run a diagnostic scan that will take your cognition circuits offline very briefly? A, a nod or a, a shake of the head will will do. Let me see if you can run it, run it. Let me see if you can run it. They sort of look at each other. That didn't feel like express consent. Maybe we should wait. Uh, and on that, we will pop to Invicta's room. Uh, so Invicta, uh, we see you there also, uh, you know, singed fur, uh, burns that have been treated and covered, but are, are definitely still there. Also a, gonna have a nice goose egg on the back of your head where you, you know, hit the, hit the ground. Again, very fortunately, just sand, but still. Um, and, uh, it's, I mean, you're, they, you are brought back to consciousness. They have, they have fixed you up like that. Uh, your injured stress is, is up there, uh, though it was at a D8 before and it's up at a D12 now. Um, you're in rough shape because you of everyone got the bl brunt of the actual explosion. Um, but they, they bring you to consciousness. It is very obvious to you, Invicta. Um, uh, actually, no, I shouldn't do that because uh, we haven't talked about that. So let me instead say, they bring you back to consciousness and the first thing the docs do uh, as soon as they notice you are awake is offer you pain medication. I just kind of like, I'm kind of like, you know that that it hurts to even open your eyes pain? Yes, that is exactly it. I just... Mm, medic, yes. And I just, I can I move my arms? Is anything broken? Um... I th no, I think there are uh, I think there are a few fractures uh, in your legs from where because that was sort of what was still inside the pod. Your arms are okay. Your legs are casted, but um, you know I think that uh, in this futuristic sci-fi society, uh, bones can be mended much quicker than we would perhaps expect here on Earth in 2021. Um, okay. Don't mean it doesn't hurt though. Ow. Um. She's just like, uh, uh, I don't care. Pills. Yeah. Yeah. And Injection. they exactly <laughs> right. They immediately hook up the little pick line they've got for you. Uh, and, and in goes the good juice. Um, and you are able to, to maintain consciousness for, for a little bit before. Well, no, that's not true. You're conscious the whole time, but you're able to maintain lucidity, uh, for a little while before, uh, before the meds take effect. Um, I mean, is there anything you you say to them or or ask them or need from them? I, it's a lot of pain, but it's getting better. I just, I just like one eye is kind of open, and is that? Oh God, I think I would have rather died. Oh. Um, she's just laying there, and she and then she realizes her legs are broken, and she like tries not to panic because for her, absolutely, her body is like her weapon. Absolutely. And she she kind of tries to pull herself up, and she goes, "Doc, Doc, oh, yes, yes, yes. Stay, 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 stay. You'll be all right." Oh, how bad is it? It's uh, you. The important thing is, you will make a full recovery if you give us the time we need and follow post care instructions. God, I feel like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, I well, he I does not say that. I said day. that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, amazing. Hey, look, she uh, was varsity in university. She wasn't just a yeah. weapon in books. Yeah, I mean, a bat can be a weapon. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he sort of actually, he does smile at you, which is perhaps the most encouraging thing you've seen so far, uh, and nods and, uh, and says... Uh, and says, yeah, uh, yes, yes, you will be able to um, return to all of your previous activities, but I'm very serious. 
that you must mm. you must take it easy and follow post care instructions particularly and <laughs> this uh, this is a this is another musalian man uh you know uh clearly has been here in mandira for a while because the next thing he says is we get a lot of return visits from surfing accidents and the like. These vacationers don't take the post care seriously, but you as a capable agent of Torch certainly will, right? Look, if I can't walk by the time I leave here, <laughs> I will make sure someone helps me walk. And no one wants that if I can't do things. I'm a terrible patient. I think he has to laugh at that uh, and then say, Invicta, I don't mean to levy a challenge, but if you had seen some of the patients here. Oh, I'm sure. And she's just like, she's just like laying there, like kind of like her hand out. She's like, at least give me something to read while I can stay awake. Uh, he sort of chuckles again and says, I'll have something brought in for you. Uh, uh, make and sure that, it's that... fun. <laughs> yes, what a great, like, passing into non-lucidity thing <laughs> to say. Make sure it's fun. And that, as, as Invicta sort of lets the good juice take hold, uh, is where we will finish for this week. Who y'all? Mysteries abound, but this week was all about getting out of that bad situation and I love it. Surprises at every turn for me included as always. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for hanging out y'all. This was episode three. We got six more, uh, seven more after this. I can count. Uh, and I am really looking forward to all of them. Before we do our outros, I want to remind you all uh, that we have a Kickstarter that is coming up in uh, nine days next Friday. Uh, as soon as we have a, uh, a pre-launch link for you all uh, to go in and click and tell Kickstarter that you're interested in it, which we would super appreciate, uh, we will post that to our Twitter. So be sure to follow us on Twitter, uh, twi uh, twitter.com slash motherlandsrpg. Uh, so be sure to follow us there so you can click on that link. It will be coming soon. We are so excited for that Kickstarter. Also in two days at 3 p.m. East, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Uh, GMT, we will, uh, uh, Bria and Tanya and I will be on Gen Con TV chatting about the Motherlands and the Kickstarter and the season and everything else. So catch us over there, twitch.tv slash Gen Con TV uh, Friday afternoon. That is that. Well, since y'all asked, we started this way. We'll roll to see the order of outros. It better be Michael. It better be Michael. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, Michael is six. Oh. Yo, the system works. <laughs> <laughs> it surely does. Mm -hmm. uh, so hello, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Michael Sinclair II. I go by Michael Chris everywhere on Twitter, on Twitch. I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm in uh, Let's Get Wild Mountain with Kuroko Bard. I'm in Faith Forge Academy, a podcast that drops every Friday. And I'm in Second Star of the Right, which is a bi-monthly D&D uh, uh, game that is sets in um, Neverland. Anyway, that's me. That's what I do. Uh, yeah. All right. I love that. Get, get, get. Three is Christina. Hi, my name is Christina, and I play Admiral Sila 919 and um, you can find me on the internet on Twitter and Instagram at Christina, R-E-L-K-R-Y-S-T-I-N-A-A-R-I-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E. and you can find me on Star Wars The High Republic Show. We have a new episode coming out in yeah. just a couple weeks, and I'm really excited about that. That's on the Star Wars official YouTube channel and StarWars.com if you want to catch up on that. And um, I post really cool pictures of myself and my fam. And I don't know, sometimes I see really cool stuff. Like I was in my backyard and my kids turned the playground in the backyard into a blanket fort. So it's like a blanket fort, a fort. What would you call a blanket fort? A borf? I don't borf? know. Anyway. No, that's cute. terrible. <laughs> Oh, oh, I don't know what it's going to be. A blort? I don't know. Anyway. A blort is good. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Then follow me on the internet. I don't know. Go talk to somebody else because everybody here is cool and really exciting. And I'm really excited to be here with all of them and watch their stuff support it. Yeah. 
the good news is you don't just have to pick one of us. You could pick multiple. For example, True. you could pick also one, two, Abria. <laughs> Yay! Hi! Uh, I'm Abri Iyengar. You can follow me on social media at Quiddy, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E. Uh, tomorrow morning, catch me at 11 a.m. Uh, with a bla- uh, on a panel over at Black Magics. Uh, like, they're talking about uh, technology and filmmaking. I'm with filmmakers. I don't think I'm supposed to be on the panel, but they invited me and they can't take it back now, so please check that out. Um, on Friday, like we we're saying, uh, come check out the Gen Con panel as we talk about Into the Motherlands. And then later on in the day at 6 p.m. over on Twi- uh, Pixel Circus's channel, you can catch me on a like GM and DM panel uh, alongside Vince Queso. And <laughs> I gotta call him Caso. I will say his name right. I just like saying the cheese name. Uh, and a bunch of other amazing people. And we're taking qu- your questions on uh, GMing and what it's like to run games on and offline. Uh, every Saturday is the Gax Pack over on Gary Con Live's Twitch channel at 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and other than that, catch at the end of the month, a new episode of Narrative Telephone on Critical Role's channel. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, yeah. my story. And they did a they hurt my story real bad. So please come check out. Uh, they failed me miserably. So watch them wallow in uh, mediocrity. And uh, yeah, The Unleashed, a game that I ran uh, in October over on Strawberry 17's channel has become a comic book. So please pre-order Radiant Black and pick up our sweet comic. Yeah. Uh, we're doing a five issue run at the end of Radiant Black starting in June. So don't miss that. Yeah, I love it. All right, even Tanya odds uh, DJ. Uh, that is an odd, it is a five. So DJ, you up next. Oh, hi, it's me. I'm DJ Knight. I'm pretty much DJ Knight everywhere on the internet. Somewhere, somehow, someone has got the name and then they're a boy. It's not me. But beyond that, uh, you can find me at DJ Knight. Uh, I love this game. And when I'm not here, I'm either streaming on my channel or like, you know, tomorrow when we're streaming with the Black Dice Society and having a great time and I get to be a werewolf. This is just kind of awesome. I think that's just me though. So, oh, hi, you're awesome. Thanks for literally, thanks for coming to hang out with us. And thank you for being so excited about season two of this show. Yeah. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure to hang out with these amazing people on a weekly basis. And the idea of having you here with us while we go through silliness, like, you know, a ship exploding. And then we just kind of walk away. <laughs> that, that means literally, you know, you are the reason that we're here. You are the reason for the season and we are excited for it. So thank you. For your presence and we look forward to seeing you whether or not it's in our streams whether or not it's in here either way we look forward to seeing you soon thank you for your support yes to all of that all right moving over to our hostess with the most tanya hi i'm tanya side from tier everywhere online obviously you can come back here on wednesdays for motherlands um and then tomorrow night i get to hang out with dj two days in a row which makes oh, me hi. super happy yeah. uh his uh desmond to my fen over on the Black Dice Societies, and then this, and then in a little over a week, Rivals of Waterdeep comes back for season ten, and I get to hang out with Eugenio twice a week. Um, that's already here. <laughs> Oops, you and me both. Yeah. Um, and uh, if Comcast shows up on Friday, we won't have to skip a week. If they screw me, we won't have an episode. Yeah. But uh, but again, please watch the socials. We're super excited about the Kickstarter. Uh, please yes. thank B. Dave Walters, who's been orchestrating the Kickstarter because I suck at it. Uh, trust me, I am not that organized. <laughs> and um, so here, Black Dice Society, Rivals coming back, Kickstarter. Eugenio reminded you about all the other stuff we're doing. And one last thing, if you missed or did not get to register for the leads talk that B. Dave and I gave, you can go into the VODs on this very channel and watch it. Uh, they were very kind to provide the recording. We had a great hour and a half chatting about motherland's justice, yeah. anti-colonialism, anti-slavery in RPGs, and in actual law. So it was a, you know, get to stretch my academic wings again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, they let me and B. Dave loose on academics, so it's kind of <laughs> funny. It's a great talk. You should all get your eyes on it because it was really, really great. Yes. And if Ahmad could grab that VOD link, that'd be great. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I moved this weekend, so pray for me if you're a praying type. Oh, bless. Uh, okay, and I'm okay, and you're MDM Jazzy Hands. I've been your storyteller. Thank you all so very much. Uh, you can catch me on my channel on Tuesdays and Thursdays, twitch.tv slash DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, my one year uh, affiliate anniversary is next Friday, so we're going to do a big event uh, next Friday if y'all want to come hang out. Happy I'd love to see you there. Congratulations. Thanks. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Um, 
Well, uh, so that's next week. Uh, but like I said, you can find me there Tuesdays and Thursday afternoons. Uh, Monday nights, I can finally talk about this now because uh, we had our premiere episode two days ago. Monday nights, I'm over on Cobalt Press's uh, Twitch channel playing in a campaign, an eight week campaign of Courts of the Shadow Fae. Uh, so we're gonna get some courtly intrigue, some romance, some I don't know what else, uh, but that's a ton of fun. Uh, Little Red Dot is our DM and uh, we're just one episode in. So come hang out with us over there on Monday nights. Uh, and that's it until Rivals comes back. Uh, keep an eye on the Twitter here uh, for Motherlands to get on board with that Kickstarter. We thank you so much. We are going to raid and my Zoom chat has moved, so I don't remember who we're raiding. Uh, we're raiding Imperial. Uh, ah, right. Who is lovely and is doing St. Jude. And well, I good. think she's building a mini coffee house. I'm not sure exactly what she's doing, uh, but a longtime <laughs> friend, amazing broadcaster, great crafter. And, uh, and also May the 5th, or what, I forget, yesterday was May the 4th be with oh, you. Revenge, revenge of the 5th. Yes, today is Revenge of the 5th. <laughs> yes, <laughs> That's right. God. Sorry, so, I Cool, that would have sounded if he had used any of his voice mod. <laughs> mm. If only. All right, we go go raid Imperial. Was <laughs> right. We go raid Imperial before this gets off the hook. Uh, thank you all for hanging out. We will see you next week, same time, same place, for episode four of Into the Motherlands. See you then. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming, y'all. Bye.